Good morning to all our viewers here for this uh, podcast. Um, my name is Kishore, I'm founder CEO of uh, Repetius Pricing AI Company, and today we have an interesting guest with us, uh, Justin Marvin. Um, Justin is, uh, uh, I would let him introduce himself, but Justin is an expert on, on managing uh, inventory at um, a key auto dealer's place in San Antonio. Uh, he does a lot of work on pricing of, of RVs, pricing of cars. So that's why we have him as our guest of honor today. Justin, would you like to introduce yourself? Give us a background of what you do and the exciting things that, that are going on in your life. Thank you, Shore. Good morning. I, I appreciate you having me. So you asked for you know some background. I I've been in the business, you know, the auto side for about 15 years. And, you know, I was at a, a one of the largest Chevy stores, you know, top top 40 in the country. You know, we basically put me through everything I could do there, you know, everything from sales to um, being an internet director, sales manager, sales director, used car director, um, then ended up as a general sales manager there for some time and up until June of this year to where I've actually transitioned to the RV side of our business and as the general sales manager here. It's been a, it's been a journey, it's been fun. Very, very interesting. Thank you for the background, Justin. So uh, you, you alluded to RVs, uh, and and then you you had a long career in just just in the auto industry, um, and we are going to explore this much further, uh, just the pricing, the challenges, the tailwinds, and so on. But let's first get to what are the challenges in the RV industry, pricing them and making sure you're profitable in your inventory uh, compared to the auto industry. What differences do you see between RV and the auto? Industry? <laughs> yeah, there, there's large differences, and I laugh because I. You know, in all honesty, I feel as though I stepped 10 years backwards uh, when I transitioned here. You know, on the auto side, there, there are so many tools, these just amazing tools you can use for, for all kinds of data analysis and, you know, pricing and, you know, tracking your turn rate with inventory, et cetera. Um, on the RV side, there, there hasn't been any. <clears throat> so that's been a big challenge. When I, when I first got here in June, you know, we were still priced to things by searching Google. Uh, search an RV trader in RV USA and, and, and trying to see where our competitors are. But that's a, a fairly grueling task to to do each unit individually like that. So that that's that was the biggest challenge for sure. Just having to do it manually because there aren't there weren't any tools for it. Interesting. Uh, th thanks for bringing that up, Justin. Um, so so you sort of you 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 didn't have information at your fingertips. So you had to go looking for the information in the net and you know, your competition and, and all of that sort of collated together and then sort of priced them. And that took a long time and the accuracy and so on. Is that, would we say that? It, it, it has, it did. And I'm sure there's still going to be some work to do. It's, there's just, in this business, there are very, very few tools that, that can really help a dealer, at least that I'm aware of as of now. I mean, I'll give you an example. You know, on the, on the General Motors side at Chevy, we have tools or they have tools rather where, you know, if I have a customer that inquired with me and went through my CRM, they can tell me if that customer ended up buying somewhere else, whether it be from a different make or, or the same make, you know, but another competitor or a, a completely different make at all, um, or if they bought from a private um, independent dealer. So you can actually really track that acquisition trail with your customers really, really well. And it's and see where you're doing wrong or where you can do better and, and finding the holes in your foundation of your processes. And, you know, so it makes you, makes it easier to improve your business. And on this side, there's nothing like that. You know, it's everything's manual, everything's, um, you know, kind of as it was 10 years ago in the car business before, before these tools came out. And interesting, Justin. So, so uh, let's think this together. So uh, assuming you had the pricing tool of your dreams, then and how would it look like? What all would you need to be more effective in pricing and managing your inventory and delivering superior returns on your inventory? I'd say ideally, you know, the first thing you want to be able to track is the impressions. You know, seeing how many people have seen your units that you have listed for sale. How many people are actually seeing it? Of those people that are actually seeing it, how many people are actually inquiring? Um, or converting, you'd say, whether it be a phone call, an internet lead, an email, a text, et cetera. So, you know, being able to see that 
is very, very important, you know, because that correlates hand in hand with pricing. Of course, you want to make sure that your pricing is on point. You know, if you if your price is too high compared to the market, your lead count and impression count will be lower. If it's too low in the market, you can be very, very high. So being able to track that is ideal. Um, that in in addition to being able to see what the true turn time is for your inventory, you know, if and the difference between floor plans or makes and models, et cetera, you know, how many how many average days does it take to sell a unit like this versus a unit like this? At a price point of say thirty nine 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 five, I may have averaged, uh, you know, twenty two days to sell, but at a price point of thirty eight nine nine five, I might have averaged a twelve day to sell. You know, to be able to track things like that would be, I would say, a, a dream tool for sure. That, that, that's very interesting, and I, I love it the way you started off earlier in the life cycle of the acquisition, essentially. Figuring out where's the where's the where's the demand, where's the leads, where's the interest. So exactly. impressions on the website, on your website. So sort of make sure that your website is, is instrumented and is able to look at the traffic, is able to understand the traffic, is it, and we're able to pull that information into our uh, analyses and pricing. Exactly. Just being able to track that trail from the beginning to the end is important. And, and having the tool to do so without having to do it manually is of <laughs> utmost importance for sure. Let's let's drill down a little bit more on this. Very interesting. So so help me understand um, what what platform do have you hosted your website on, and how uh, are you getting the information from your website on impressions, visits, and so on, so on. So when you say platform, are you referring to advertising platforms or the websites themselves? The web. All of it, the, the, the website mm -hmm. and any ads and anything, whatever it takes to be able to face the consumers and they visit and they see your inventory and they look around, they walk around. If there's any photos, they view it. So you can really measure how much time they've spent on each of those uh, of your vehicles. You know? So is there, is there a specific tool you're using to, for your website and so on? Yeah, so you know we'll use Google Analytics, of course, to, to help track conversions and and you know the demographic and see where our leads are coming from etc um, our website and most websites probably have a tool that shows you impressions um that'll actually show you how many people have visited the site how many people you know looked at your your vsrs or then or looked at the unit themselves as on the vdp um, and not only looked at but did they actually click one of the uh, ctas you know being a call to action um, requested information check and availability you know sit into the credit link app etc so you know, obviously from the from a 30,000 foot view, you know, you were, the, the goal is to, to get exposure to your inventory, you know, through different advertising methods, you know, social media, you know, we do a lot there. We also do a lot on, on Google, you know, with SEM content, you know, we even do uh, quite a bit of OTT, which is over the top advertising um, on TV, you know, through sources like the Hulu, et cetera. You know, the idea is to obviously to get the eyeballs or the attention on your inventory, but then to be able to track it once they hit your site. Excuse me, once they hit your site, what's happening then? And that's where that's where the real that's where the real challenge begins, I believe. You know, it's, how it's are you doing it now? How are so, you just once somebody comes to your website, how do you know the specific person, the specific name, email, phone number has come and we gotta get back? How do you do that, Justin? Yeah, unfortunately we can't get specifics until they actually convert into submitting the lead. But you know we can get the overall analytics and and trying to track you know overall website conversions. We do have a a number we're looking to hit, um, and you know currently we're we're light in the, on the RV side versus you know our sister source and where I came from. But that's something that you know we're looking to continue tackling and you know doing things on the website to I guess to help um, you know lead those customers through a funnel through the sales funnel and you know, lead them down the path. And that path ultimately is to convert and converting being submitting the lead, um, you know, calling us, texting us, et cetera. So we have that opportunity to earn their business in the first place. That's that's very, very good. So so what I heard you saying is we won't have any information until they sort of choose to input a form and they convert to a lead. Right. Uh, is that right, Justin? Yeah. Now, I mean, if somebody is logged on to Google, no, I mean, obviously, this is this is a little bit of a a little bit of a marketing um, trick. But if somebody is logged on to Google, 
and they visit your website and there are ways to capture some of their information even before they get to a lead stage um that that's that's something i'll be happy to you know explain in a in a later conversation but there yeah, are but tools to sort of uh, sort of uh, sort of understand uh, you know what's what's their background and they if they logged on to google specifically which many people do then we can almost get the email and so on they may or may not like it that's a different thing but we have some understanding <laughs> where they are. yeah and then they come to a, a lead stage and then you get that uh, then 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 you go ahead to explain to us how do you price your inventory how often do you do it how much time do you take what are the factors involved can you go over the process justin yeah, and that's and that's a big part of it you know it's easy to, to to spend money in advertising but to make sure that you're advertising the right unit um, you know as well as having that unit at the correct pricing really makes sense so when i first got here you know all you really could do is search google you know take each unit search google look for some competitors in your area um, you know check rv trader rv usa etc trying to see how you want to fit into the market so that that really was uh, step one here is, is kind of getting my thumb on that pulse and, and trying to figure out a process uh, of how to do so that's up until of course we uh, you know, I have run into your company and you've helped with, you know, creating this tool that I'm now using, which is uh, very, has been very helpful. But basically, if you're referring to how I'm doing it now versus how I did it then, uh, what I'll do is I'll basically come in each morning and I'll, I'll look at, you know, each one of my units. I, I try to sort them in, in a similar order every day, you know, by stock number, just so it makes it some, uh, so make it easier. But what I'll do is I'll go out at a certain radius. You know, if I have a an inexpensive unit, say a thirty, forty thousand dollar trailer, something that someone's probably not going to travel more than five hundred miles for, I'll keep the radius tight. You know, within five hundred miles, see how many are on the market currently. Um, if there's multiple, I'll try to be a loss leader, typically, uh, or a price leader rather. You know, up, especially if somebody is is very close to me. If I have a dealer right down the street, then I'll probably I'll probably beat their price by just a little bit just to be competitive and and to hopefully win that conversion and get the opportunity to to actually earn that customer's business in the first place um if it's a more expensive unit then i'll i'll adjust the mileage or the radius around the dealership and go much further out you know if i'm looking at a, a four hundred thousand dollar bus i'd go the entire country because somebody is definitely willing to travel across the country for for five ten thousand dollar savings so, you know, that's, that's uh, I'd say, the easier part. The harder part is if I'm competing against somebody down the road and I'm currently beating their price by $1,000, I want to know when that, that dealership I'm competing against sold their units. So if they sold their unit, that's, that's where it becomes a little more challenging because you need to keep track of that. And I no longer need to compete against a dealer if that unit sold. So what I'll do is I'll try to go in daily and notice trends and, and, and spot units that are no longer there. Um, so I can I can adjust my price accordingly and, and you know raise up next to the the second best price, I guess you can say, since that since that original one I was competing against is gone. Or the opposite, you know, an, another dealership might offer a sale that's now better than my price. I need to be able to see that as well. So I can stay you know, stay fluid with the price, I guess you can say, and just and stay competitive because the way the market is currently, yeah, I, I, in all fairness, price has always been a, a huge factor, but but especially now, it seems that we really, really have um, gotten ourselves into a price battle, and that's across the across the nation, especially as we have more cash buyers. It seems, you know, as they're spending their own money, it seems they're they fight for a little more. So, which is respectful, I get it, but it does create situations where, you know, it's it looks as though it's a race towards the bottom. So being able to to have something that allows me to see when a competitor's loss leader sold, so I can now raise my price back up to where it should be, really helps too. So I don't, so I'm not selling something less expensive than I need to. Very interesting. Very interesting. A, a loss leader and the loss leader has sold out their their inventory, so you can raise your prices back. So so help me understand. I think this is a core question. I have two questions here, Justin. Assuming you have uh, the right tools, uh, how much better can you do on your on your sales on your performance? But the second question I have, and you can answer it whichever way, is: Is this really a a lose lose game? If we if if all the dealers had the two had had the had tools, 
would they all race to the bottom or would we all win? I mean, I, this is a very touchy question, but what, what's is. your perspective on this, <laughs> Just, Justin? It is. It, I'd say it is. And I would say that if everybody is proficient at the tool, then it could be a race to the bottom. Uh, however, that's never the case. Uh, you know, coming from the dealership I oversaw for quite some time, you know, we used this tool, we used another tool that was a very powerful tool. Um, and you, you know, you can make the same argument there or, or, same, or raise the same question there. But you're always going to have some people that are power users. I mean, when I refer to people, I mean dealers. You know, you always have some dealers that are power users and that really learn some good processes and, and how to take full advantage of the tools they're working with. And then other dealers that that just don't. And and you know they they kind of half ass it and you know they have the tool available to them. They pay for it each month, but they're not using it to its full potential. So everyone may have the same same uh, same tool. But you know, there's different skill sets and different motivation levels that allow somebody to to use uh, it differently. Interesting, interesting. So I, I think what I'm hearing is, if 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 everybody has these tools, and and then 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 it, it gets difficult because everybody has the same level of proficiency, and everybody's watching prices and adjusting prices. Um, I mean, to the to the extent that 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 uh, that competitors are geographically dispersed, it may still be okay. Uh, but if uh, considering the fact that if there's competitors who are close by and they have the same tools, then it may be raised to the bottom. However, what you are saying is many of them don't have the tools, and even if they do, they don't use it well, and they don't yeah. have the same motivation and the same drive and the same competence to use it well and to that extent the people who use the tools have a better advantage yeah it, it's definitely uh you touch is probably the wrong word but it's definitely one of those those conversations that you can get really deep into um you know and then you can argue the same way you can argue in the opposite way where you know if i have a competitor down the street that has the same tool and equal motivation you know that that's not necessarily going to hurt me it could benefit me also because you know if for example, if I have a loss leader and the competitor down the street is trying to compete with me, but my loss leader sells, I don't want them to continue on that. I don't want them to continue to have a loss leader and me to try to have to keep up with another unit. You know, so they may see mine's gone and they may raise their price. You know, it's uh, there's so many different ways that you can look at it. I would say overall, the more data, the more information and the more useful tools every dealer has, I would say is best for all of us personally. Wow, that that's that's a big. Uh, I use the word relief because we we are uh, you know we are all in the business of building platforms, tools, analytics, and and one of the questions we ask ourselves, and one of the questions investors ask is, are you build something which in, which is win win? Yes. Which means overall it really works out for everybody. And I, I think yeah. your answer was very relieving. Even if everybody has these tools and they have the information. Overall, they would still be working well and working sort of with each other, not stepping over it, each other, not it, eating it, each market. And that's a good point I was going to mention as well. You know, you have dealers that just aren't very in tune with their their individual markets. You know, it's and it's very difficult without a tool. It's very very difficult to know how you should price your unit. You know, what do you base it off of? What do you what do you base it off of? Who who are you basing it off of? Are you based it off of customer feedback? Are you based off the manufacturer's suggestion? Um, are you just guessing? Are you just assuming? You know, this is where it should be priced. What data are you using to 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 price your your vehicle or your RV or whatever it is you're trying to sell sell? You know what what data are you using to to actually do this? Um, you know, if you have that data, it allows you to you know to be more. I'm consistent in the market, I guess you could say. <clears throat> you know, if I have a, a mom and pop dealer down the road that has no idea what they're doing and they're, they're pricing a unit way too low below the market because they feel it, that's a good price, that can hurt everybody else. You know, the other dealers that that don't want to be at that price point, it, it can hurt them also, you know, because you have customers that may see that low price and you can kind of create a standard with a customer um, or an expectation that a, that that certain type of unit should be priced a certain way, uh, which really may not be the case. And you can change, you can change unintentionally change your entire market that way. And I'll give you an example. You know, at the Chevy store, we had we had some months where we wanted to push really hard and and you know maintain a certain a certain position yeah, in the country and and within our our region. 
And in doing so, we we launched some really really aggressive pricing on Silverados at a certain dollar amount off, and we and we kept it that way for about a month or two. And what ended up happening is, you know, a solid twenty to twenty five dealers ended up competing with us, and we ended up changing the market unintentionally to where now customers are expecting twelve, thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars off Silverados when only three or four hundred miles away in Dallas or Fort Worth, et cetera, they may be only at $6,000 discounts. So you can, you can really uh, have an impact on the market, you know, for the good or the bad, but having a tool, everybody having an, an opportunity to see where the market's at in the first place, I'd say is a, is a win, definitely not a lose. Very, very interesting. And thanks for the perspective. Uh, let me ask you, uh, and uh, now this is what we, we all, we all uh, strive for, right? If you were given a tool, how much better can you do right so you go back to your boss and you say i want to buy this tool and it's going to cost so much money and your boss is going to ask you so how many more can you sell how much more money can you make how much more can you do on margins mm -hmm. so talk to us justin uh, what would be the benefits the upside of having such tool and such information time i'd say time for sure you know you can accomplish you can accomplish similar things without a tool but you know to give you an example pricing 160 units which is what i currently have manually is you know a solid full day process it could easily take an entire day and how often can you do that you know you can't i can't do that i can't spend an entire day every day looking at every single unit and repricing manually every single day because then i don't have the ability or time to focus on other areas of my business so up until this point you know, I was spending a, nearly an entire day to accurately and efficiently reprice everything and do some proper market research on every unit in my inventory, new end use. Now it takes me uh, maybe about an hour and a half to do the same task. Uh, and I'd say more efficiently because I'm not just focused on more local dealers near me because you can only click so many websites on Google within enough time in a day. Um, now I can go all the way through the entire nation relatively quickly on one unit. So I would say time is is the biggest the biggest factor with having a good tool. Um, not to mention just time, but also accuracy of your data that really helps. Um, you know, then you then at the same time I've used this same tool, which is something that you and I haven't discussed yet. But I've used this same tool to to help close customers. Um, you know, we'll I've I've taken it back to my office multiple times and or printed a printed the screen out to show them, hey, the reason I can't go lower on my price is because I'm the best price unit out of the 20 in a 2,000 mile radius. So that helps retain, some, helps retain some growth there. Uh, it also helps keep our prices fluid because when I do have a competitor's loss leader I'm, I'm competing against, when that unit sells, I can see that it did sell. So I can now raise my price back up a little bit, you know. Even if that's a few hundred dollars or a thousand or whatever that may be, that adds potential revenue back to the bottom line. And, and interesting, very, very, very. This is very interesting. Uh, is that a is that a number you can put? Can, can, can you say you you've increased um, you know margins by you know some percentage? Is that a number you can put on the on the benefit, uh, Justin? Uh, you, I'd like to be able to give you a, a number. Um, I would say it hasn't been long enough to where I can see a true trend. I need I need to sell some more units and a little more time to pass in order to to give you a better number like that. I can say so far I've saved hours and hours and hours and hours of time. Uh, I've also been able to increase my my traffic on the website um, as well as other platforms we advertise on because uh, of having the ability to properly price a unit in the market. And, and knowing and seeing that I am one of those price leaders, because that's the way we choose to do business. We'd like to be price leaders and focus on volume. Um, and, you know, if I don't have an easy way to do so, I'm just not going to be there, which with them, if you're, if you're not priced competitively, then more than likely you're not going to get the attention and get those eyeballs that you want on the website. And and all of these concepts and all of these, these practices that you said, they're saving time and better pricing, uh, I know, I know you're doing it in the RV world. How applicable is it in the auto world, especially the independent autos who who probably don't have all the tools available? What's your perspective? Just um, I would say it's far more important in the auto side because in the auto side there are a lot of tools that the big dealers have and they're using. I mean, I in at the Chevy store I would reprice twice a day. Um, I would 
also price tickle the market considerably. You need even going up or down a hundred dollars can make a difference. And on the auto side, there's just so much more competition. You know, if you have a 2022 Serato 1500 LT four wheel drive, there could be 150 in a 50 mile radius for sale. So if you're even 20, 30, 40 down the list in pricing for a very similar mileage trim, et cetera, uh, you just may not sell it. it. It just may take some time. And unless you can have a quick, easy tool to use to know where you need to be priced, it's going to sit. You know, on the RV side, it's a little, I'd say it's a little easier than the auto side just because of the fact that I, I see and have noticed dealers that keep the same price for months. For I mean, just three, four, five months on the same unit. They don't change the prices. They're not fluid. Um, they just kind of, I guess they get the unit in when they when it arrives from the factory or when they bought it. They set a price and forget it or it may do an occasional sale. But I'd say it's definitely more important on the auto side at this point, just because RV dealers haven't caught up yet, which ultimately they will. Got it. Got it. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we're sort of on the top of the of the of our uh, webinar for about 30 minutes. I'll just just sort of open it up for any questions from people who are hanging out with us. Mm -hmm. Pascal, Priyanshu, Harshada. Yeah, I have a question, Justin. So when a customer comes in, right? So what are the different aspects you look to make an RV get sold, right? Such that he will not lose to other competitors, or or do you look at margin versus uh, you know customer satisfaction, or how do you make it? So as crazy as it sounds, I actually don't pay attention to the margin per se as much as you might think. Because in all reality, it doesn't ha doesn't matter how much I spent on a unit. All that matters is what it can sell for, and the market will depict on what it can sell for. Um, you know, whether I paid ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars, it doesn't make a difference. You can't you can't um, choose how you price a unit based off of what you spent. You can only choose to price a unit based on on what the market will pay for it. So. You make your money when you bought it, and and that's about it. Yeah, thanks. Very good. I'm not sure if I if I completely answered your question, but you know, it's it's definitely not making decisions um, based off margin. Yeah, because it, it won't help. You, you know, for example, if if I gave you a free Corvette today. But they're worth one hundred thousand dollars. Just because you got it free doesn't mean you should sell it for fifty thousand. You're still going to want to sell it for the maximum you can get it for. Uh, but at the same time, if you paid one hundred fifty thousand for that Corvette, and they're only selling for one hundred thousand, you're not going to sell it for one hundred fifty thousand or more. It's only going to sell for a hundred. So the, what you pay for it actually doesn't matter, in my opinion. Um, you know, of course, for you know when I say it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter when we're when we're listing and we're advertising them. You know, of course, it matters with the bottom line, but that's why you need to make those those smart decisions on how you purchase, what you purchase, and how much you spend for things. Um, and having a tool that shows you what the current market value is really, really helps with that. And that's actually one thing we haven't discussed, Kishore, is one of the other things that I, I use this for currently um, quite a bit is when I'm going to purchase a unit. So if I have someone that's looking to sell me a unit or I'm looking to take in a, a trade unit, I'm able to see, you know, what the, what the average market price is for them. You know, and 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 would want to see further uh, how long they've been sitting on the market. You know, because a lot of times, you know, dealerships will will take into consideration what the book value is. And if I'm if I'm looking to trade for a unit that has a book value of fifty thousand dollars, and a in a, a quote unquote retail book value of sixty thousand dollars, but I can see online with a tool that the average price is forty five thousand dollars. That's the problem. I don't want to spend fifty thousand dollars on this investment. If online, they're for forty-five. So that's another yeah. area that the tool can really help, helping you make better decisions when you actually purchase the unit you're looking to to acquire. Because as I mentioned a moment ago, you make your money when you purchase it. Yeah. Spot on the tra pricing trade-ins, absolutely, just just yep. wonderful. Definitely. That's been such a such a sharing of uh, wisdom. Um, uh, any other questions, guys? Maskar, Ranchu, Ashada. Uh, no, I'm good. So trade-ins, pricing, 
saving time that's 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 so yeah i had another uh, i think i think the last question now is sure. so what would be the role of admins kbb I mean, they all give you price so what would be the value of such a tool vis-a-vis -vis a kbb you know i i struggle with that i struggle with that for a long time i guess what it can do is you know i'd say the only value of something like that is uh you know consumer not trust but you know i guess people don't know where to start and if a customer doesn't know where to begin it can make the negotiation process more difficult i personally i'd rather work with a customer that has a lot of knowledge in the business and has been to a bunch of different dealerships because they already know what more or less to expect <clears throat> and they're they're more realistic and i guess kbb and you know uh, the jd powers of the world you know they can help give the customer at least a, a general idea of what to expect which can make our life as a dealer a little easier you know i'm sure uh, every dealer has had their fair share of customer that you know makes a half price offer on one of their units <laughs> just trying to negotiate because they don't know any better you know they just don't know they don't they don't know how they should negotiate and you know some of these tools can can help give them some of that ammunition and knowledge to at least um, negotiate a little better and more realistically with the dealer to actually make a deal and give them some more realistic expectations got it got it that puts things in perspective um yeah at the top of the uh, uh the the time allotted for the webinar this is just immensely useful, Justin. Um, thank you so much for your time. And we're gonna just save this. We're gonna put this out on uh, uh, on YouTube, uh, and and we're gonna share it on LinkedIn. Um, thank you very much. I, I'm gonna stop the recording here. Sure. I mean, ho hopefully, it helps in some way. At least, at least.